everyone and welcome to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Brigitte and today we'll be talking about a few things you should know before PCSing to Germany. <music> My husband Devin and I are stationed in Kaiserslautern, Germany. In September, that will mark our two year anniversary of living overseas. This is our first BCS, so just keep that in mind as I give you information because this is the only base I can kind of go off of when it comes to PCSing and all those sorts. But if you like videos like this, please give it a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe below. This is my first video, just talking head on to the camera, so please be nice. But I'd be happy to do these kinds of videos if, it's, if it seems helpful. So if it does, please be sure to leave a comment of any suggestions or questions you may have, or be, feel free to follow us on our social media channels. So let's get started. The first thing that I wanna address, so how I'm going to talk about things are mostly the most frequent asked questions and just the priority of everything. So of course, one of the biggest concerns and thoughts when getting assigned overseas is whether to live on or off base. Of course, that's something you think about when you move anywhere, but specifically overseas, it is, it, is overwhelming to make that decision. For the most part, we personally live off base and we absolutely love it. We don't plan on living on base. Where we live, the location is perfect for us. It's close to my husband's work and also the main um, military facility. If you're unfamiliar with the word Kaiser Sautern, that's mostly geared towards Army. My husband is active duty Army. But if you're Air Force, the main base here is Ramstein. So Kaiser Sautern and Ramstein are just right, are right next to each other. So when it comes to living on base, that is just something that's totally up to you and whatever your family situation is. I have heard that living on base is great for families if they're going to a Going to the military schools, they said that's uh, really convenient because a lot of their school friends are on base, so it's just nice for you. Of course, that doesn't mean all their friends are, and you can see, find yourself driving quite a ways away because of the boundaries being so different here. We have lucked out, and we actually chose and found a home that's in the actual city of Kaiserslautern. How Germany is situated is that they actually have villages that surround the main cities, or main villagers, I should say. And so that's what makes it different for us because we live in the main area where others live a little ways away or they just live in smaller villages that aren't too, too far away. Um, we live about 20 minutes from Ramstein and then my husband works on Kleber, which is only 15 minutes away from us and we literally live a mile away from downtown. So we truly do live in the suburbs. But again, when you think about it, just think about where you are. It's just us two, we don't have any pets. Germany is a really big animal friendly home, um, country, so it's not too, too hard to find landlords that are okay with having pets. But German homes typically are, you can find really large ones, which make it easier for your families to adjust. However, the houses on base are great as well. We based our decision off just having wanting to have the full experience of living in Germany, and that's by engulfing ourselves and surrounding ourselves with German neighbors and living the ways that they do on a day-to-day -day basis. So those are just the things to keep in mind when you decide that. And one of the other main things that people always ask about is, am I fluent in German? And the answer is no but I know enough to get by. So if the language is something you are really dreading to learn, I would honestly say that you don't need to know it fluently, but I would totally and strongly recommend that you learn at least enough to get by. So just at least learn the basics of the greetings and salutations and your farewells, as well as just like your manners. All those basics will go far. They are 
things that you'll use on a day-to-day -day basis whenever you leave your home. So it just makes everything that much better when you get here and it makes everything easier. Some apps you can download before you get here is Duolingo. I believe it's called Mango. I might have to double check. I, don't, I used Duolingo when I first got here. And then of course Rosetta Stone. Um, also when you get here, MWR, which I believe is located in any army base. You can correct me if I'm wrong. But they also host free German classes. The only difficult about it is obviously it's high demand. So sometimes it does take a while for you can, for you to get into an actual class. But again, a lot of these things you can just learn on an app for free. Um, another thing is, is that since Great Britain was a major part of the EU, English is one of the main languages. So they a lot of the tourist areas, they'll always have like, not always, but a lot of them will have English translations and it's not too, too difficult to find someone that does speak English. But I myself know how to go to the grocery store. I know how to read. Also Google Translate is a miracle worker and it, go, it helps so much. So those are just a few things to help ease your nerves when it comes to learning the German language. Okay, so the next few things I'll be talking about are in kind of like priority, like I mentioned before. So the biggest thing that I personally can, can't still wrap my head around and still boggles my mind is Germany doesn't have air conditioning. Yes, I had to do a dramatic like pause and everything because that is crazy to a lot of us Americans, of course, especially me when I, li I lived in Utah, which is a desert, and then Florida, which is 100% humidity all the time. So living in a country that has no air conditioning is just mind blowing. But I do live to tell the tale that I survived the hottest summer ever recorded. That's quite the mouthful, but you get what I'm saying. So how to survive those things is a lot of fans. And what a lot of Americans do is they purchase portable air conditioners. We decided not to do that because it's about three to $400, even maybe more. And we just don't see that cost effective when it's only about two or three months of that heat. But again, if that's what you want, need to be comfortable, more power to you. We just had a lot of fans, like a lot, probably about, we had four in our bedroom and two or three in our living room because it got so hot to in during the summer. And when I say like not even just on in their homes off base they don't have it in their homes on base they don't have it in their grocery stores um movie theaters gyms hospitals there are no there's no air conditioning anywhere and i don't really know the reason why i have heard it's because it just never really gets that hot here and the building materials that they use it just makes it last longer when you don't have air conditioning but again don't quote me on any of that so when you get here, just prepare yourself if you're coming in the summer or you're about to live through your first summer. When you see vans on sale, snag them. But don't do it before you move here, and I'll get to that later. So the next thing that a lot of Americans get are, a lot of Americans seem to have a hard adjustment to is that everything is closed on Sunday. From a lot of people, this is like very detrimental and very hard. But for me, I grew up in a house that we can't, couldn't really do things on Sundays, so it wasn't that big of a deal for me. But that means their grocery stores, their gas stations, just to give you an idea of how severe they take it here, is when you're a semi truck driver, you have to pull off, pull over on Saturdays and you're not allowed to drive on Sunday. Um, I believe it's just because Germany has a big, uh, Germany takes work to life balance very serious and this is a way that they allow people to have at least one day off throughout the week. So that's why 
it is the way it is. Also, on the same note, make sure you learn their German holidays because it's the same thing. They, everything is closed. Like how Walmart is closed on Christmas, everything is closed every holiday. So make sure you note that because sometimes I've had that an experience where I didn't realize it was a German holiday and I needed to go grocery shopping and I parked my car and I'm like, oh my gosh, it's not open. But of course you still have the BX and the commissary as well as the gas station on base, which is also called the shop it. So you're not all out of luck except for Christmas, of course. But so another thing about it, this is another big thing to remember is that there is a quiet time that exists here in Germany, which is strange, but it is, they, again, they take it very serious. So the first time, like thought of quiet time is 1 p.m. to 3 p.m. And then anything after 7 p.m. is quiet hours as well. So the big significance about this and as well as on Sundays and German holidays is you can't use like power tools. You can't have loud music playing. If you're having a barbecue or any of the sorts, you must have respectful volume. And if you don't, they will call the police on you and you can receive a fine. So it's not a joke. It does seem kind of like overwhelming, but you really do adjust to it just fine. It's not too difficult. The time slot of 1 p.m. to 3 p.m. may sound really random, but the word kindergarten is actually a German word. And 1 p.m. and 3 p.m. was an old practice that they used for nap time, that time slot. So that's why it's quiet time throughout the day and they just still practice it in modern times. So that's your fun fact about Germany in relation to German tied to American lifestyle. So there you go. So just remember Sundays, German holidays and quiet time it will take you far. So as I mentioned when it came to the fans, the reason why you don't want to buy them before you get here is because the voltage in Germany or in Europe as a whole is a lot stronger than those than that in America. So in America, they use 110 voltage. In Europe, they have 220 voltage. So unless your item is dual voltage, you may it may or may, may not you kind of like, you know, explode because it's so powerful here. So things that are examples of dual voltage is your, are your chargers for your electronics. A lot of electronics are dual voltage, um, like your televisions and all that, but things that aren't dual voltage are your kitchen appliances, a lot of them aren't, and a lot of hair tools aren't. So when you move here, when you PCS here, they will give you two transformers one if you're single, two if you have multiple people in your household. And those are just things that convert the voltage into 110 so nothing will get damaged. So just keep a note of that, that, that you might have to keep a lot of things in storage or, or you just have to use the transformer a lot for a lot of your appliances. Or again, you can buy appliances when you get here and just resell them once you leave. So. Those are just a few things to keep in mind. To give you an example of what the voltage or the plugs here look like, this is an example of what a plug looks like. This is an extension cord. So um, this is an adapter. So if you can tell, that's the difference. So you'll plug your American 110 voltage item into here. I mean, sorry, excuse me. You will plug in your dual voltage item, so your like an example is your charger for your phone. You'll put that in here, and you can plug it directly in the wall, or you can just, these are how they look, you just plug it in there. And voila, so that's how it works. Sorry, I cannot believe I said you put your 110, do not do that, do not put your 110 in this. So, there you go. And the last thing, because I know this video has gotten so long, and I'm sorry for that, um, again, this is my first time, so I will work on that. But the last item, last thing to keep in mind is, and one thing I get asked all the time is the Autobahn. Does it exist? Is there really no speed limit? Is it, and is it as awesome as it sounds? Yes, the Autobahn is real. They do drive fast here in Europe, and it is very convenient when you're on those long road trips because it makes obviously everything that much faster. 
The average speed limit here on the freeway is around 80, mi 80 miles per hour because it's about 130 kilometers per hour. So you do typically go fast anyways. However, it is kind of crazy because your speed limit can drop significantly really quick. And on that same note, speeding tickets are really easy to get here. Not because the police catch you, but because they have speeding cameras all over the place that are either permanent or temporary. And even if you are going one kilometer above the speed limit, it will snap a picture of you and you will get your ticket in the mail. Usually the smaller ones, so like the one kilometer to five or seven kilometers are like 20 euros, not, not too, too bad, but there are major ones and I hate to say it, that I have received one. And that's because the speed limit changes so quick here. So you can go, I've seen cars go like 130, 140 miles per hour. So you can't go really fast, but just note that once that speed limit drops, be aware, because it is pricey. Well, that is all folks. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to hit subscribe and give it a thumbs up. If you like videos like this, I'd be happy to make more. I have ideas and thoughts of creating things like restaurant etiquette, just things that I wish I could touch on in this video, but they kind of are more elaborate and would take up more time. So if you'd like to see something like that, be sure to leave a comment below. Also, don't forget to follow myself and my husband on Instagram because we would love to answer any questions that you have. Okay, we'll see you next time. Thank you.